Hey, everybody, it's JL. Just before the episode starts, two quick announcements that I want you to hear in case you're like many of the people who just tune out the last two minutes of every episode. Uh, my special taping, part two or version two, uh, May 14th in New York City, 9.30 p.m. Uh, just want to remind everybody, if you can go, if you are going, get your tickets now. Uh, consider this your call to arms, call to action. Uh, your, your January 6th, if you will, for my comedy career. Um, also, this Thursday, JL Max Plus Prime, my Patreon channel with a, a lot of uh, stuff uh, as not Trump, and some of it even as me, will launch. Uh, you'll be able to get to that on my website, jlcomedy.com. So two big things, uh, you know, before before I decide to completely quit comedy. So uh, prolong my comedy career, if you so choose. Uh, and with that dreary, dreary intro... Why don't we do a very strong, powerful podcast? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the President of the United States of Mar-a-Lago of America of the United States, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, gloating like always, how are you today? Not like a butterfly, sting like a bee cup. That's that's what I say. You know, they call me the greatest. Uh, so yes, we're doing. Well, I don't know. How do you think we're doing? Why don't it, you know? You always say, you know the tech stuff people they send. They always, same intro. How are you doing, sir? And you did, by the way, didn't say sir. Uh, so this will be your last episode. But the these. What about you? What do you? What the hell do you think is going on? Because this would be a better way to judge whether we have a good tech stuff person. Gas is nine hundred dollars a, a gallon. Um, Democrats are being pedophiles, and they're destroying our country. And they're being very mean to Vlad Putin. So, how do you think it's going, tech stuff guy? Um, I mean, the part about being mean to Vlad Putin is fine with me, but definitely the gas prices are are nuts. I mean, it did go. I found gas the other day for three ninety nine, which was a uh, was thrilling. And I don't know about the whole pedophiles thing. I need some evidence, but the gas really pisses me off. So know, we're, we're on the we same page. Do your right. research. That's why we say do your research. So I have to look at QAnon research. more. You're right. You know, QAnon, uh, there's a lot of QBert also. There's a lot of people out there who know a lot more than they're letting on. So we have to we're going to that strong. And thank you to everybody who always on social media, when we put up posts of our strong episode, you know, question whether this is authentic. It's like, <laughs> how stupid are people? How stupid are people? <laughs> I love it. Joe Biden's America. Sleepy Joe. America. Everybody's put their brains to sleep. You know, like a computer when you have the sleep mode where it's like sort of on, but it's not really on. Mm hmm. Yeah, put my computer that's, in sleep on every man. night. Well, you know what? I don't need to know about your personal life, but the the sleepy Joe, he's done it to all of America. He's put us, he's turned us all into sleepy computers. How is Ivanka? I haven't heard much of Ivanka recently. How is um, she doing? You know, you know that I'm not, that I, I'm not a angry African American, but I will tell you to keep Ivanka's name out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> I'll slap you in this Zoom so fast your head would spin. <laughs> so she's doing well? Ivanka's hot. She's sexy. Uh, from the extra swelling of her breasts I noticed today, I think she's about to have a period. So everything's going very, uh, very well for, you know, the great, the, may, some say the greatest. I would even say the greatest Trump, but obviously most people would say she's the second greatest Trump. Do you think she will ever run for office? Well, if she does, I hope she wears a loose-fitting bra. <laughs> Can you imagine that? It's like a Baywatch for president. <laughs> it could happen. Now, Mr. President, I wanted to ask you, before we get into everything, lots of news, but we I, today is National Zucchini Bread Day. I didn't even know zucchini. Mike, 
Zucchini bread. <laughs> Mike thought Mike was came running in here and knocked over the cutting board in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. Anyway, uh, no, it's it's this is what we get under Sleepy Joe. Everybody gets a part. Now it's not enough. Every child gets a participation trophy. Now every object gets a part. Oh, zucchini bread. Oh, and I see, is there a zucchini day coming up later? Because you know a zucchini will protest and say, "Sir, why the why did my my bread my bread got a day, but I am I'm not getting a day." Have you ever had zucchini bread? I've actually had zucchini muffins. I've never had any bread or muffin ever cooked with zucchini. And I, I really didn't even know that they had zucchini bread. And there's a day named after it. I think that's very strange. Everything gets a day now. And I'm being very PC. It's called stupid. <laughs> it's called stupid. It's not called strange. Sir, that's strange, sir. Am I being politically correct? Am I being nice to the zucchini left? <laughs> no, it's called stupid. Very stupid. I'd like people to choke on their zucchini bread today, and I would not do the the the, the Hanukkah maneuver. I would not do it. I would let them choke to death. I think it's called the Heimlich, not the the Hanukkah. Well, you know, you're the Kushner, so you'd know how to pronounce all the Jewish words. But you know, either way, potato, uh, potato pancake. However you say it. <laughs> okay. Let's just jump right in, Mr. President. You recently did an interview with Pierce Morgan. Didn't know you were a fan of his. Haven't you talked a trash about him in the past? Well, sure, but it's called forgiveness. You know, as a strong Christian, we believe in forgiveness. And I gave him another opportunity because he's, he's always been, I gotta, I gotta say, the thing I like a little bit about Pierce First of all, I call him Pierce. He hates that. He's like, that's Pierce, <laughs> sir. And I go, you know what? You're Pierce, okay? You're like Brosnan, you're lucky I'm calling you Pierce because he's a lot more handsome than you. Not as handsome as me, but he's a good looking guy. And he's one of these guys who sort of upsets both sides. And even though I disagree, I kind of like it when people upset both sides sometimes. Not when they upset me. Mm -hmm. When they upset both sides, you know, like he's anti-gun which i don't like but he's also anti-walk which i like so sometimes you have to talk to people who don't fit all the the normal categories but the left really seems to hate him so i thought okay i'll talk to him now you are you're very pro-american right america number one and i don't know why you would let a Look foreigner Trump america number one sleepy joe biden's america number 92 or number 69 but why would you let someone who's not American get this exclusive interview with you? You know, England used to own us, okay? We used mm -hmm. to be part of England. I call it the uh, United Airlines Kingdom, okay? <laughs> and we used to be part of that. And then we won. We kicked the crap out of them. And it was, you know, it was a long time ago. It was like 60 years ago. But I like to remind them, you know, the way you might, like if you get buff, you walk by an ex-girlfriend or something and you go, oh, hey, I didn't see you there, but I've been working out and I have a lot of money now. So you're a poor piece of shit. Nice seeing you. That's what I like <laughs> to do to England sometimes to say, look how good you could have had it. Look how good you could have had it, England. You could have had Donald J. Trump, Ivanka Trump, but you fucked it up. You're stupid, you have bad teeth, you have horrible food, you have cloudy weather, and you lost your greatest people because you lost a war 40 years ago and America got its freedom. I don't know if it was 40 years ago. Or when I, you know, excuse me, 1976. I know the date very well. That's why we have, instead of the 1619 project, we support the 1976 project because that's true independence and true social. Okay. Piers Morgan, was he on The Apprentice? That I know. I know Brisket was the great singer who passed away. <laughs> Meatloaf? Who? I don't think his name was Brisket. I think his name was Meatloaf. 
Well, hamburger helper is what we <laughs> called him, and he was a good guy, and we miss him. But uh, I don't recall if uh, Piers Morgan was on. He might have been. I didn't pay too much attention to him, if he was. Now, did you threaten to walk off the Piers Morgan interview? I did. I threatened very strongly. Why would you threaten so strongly to walk off an interview that oh, to be granted? honest, I don't make I don't make weak threats. <laughs> I make strong threats. That's why they matter. That's why my threats matter. And because he was saying stupid things about the election that it wasn't stolen. And it was stolen like a dog. Now, him not being American, how educated is he really in our um, well, he has the election British process? Accent, which is the British accent often makes you smarter. A lot of people know that, but it makes you smarter. Does it make you smarter or make you seem smarter? Is there a difference? Well, yeah. One is actually you are smarter and one just makes you sound like you're smarter. Fifth grader. Smarter than a fifth grader, remember that? <laughs> you, know what they, you know what they didn't do? Are you smarter than a British fifth grader? They didn't do that because the British fifth graders would probably be even smarter. And it's a sad thing because of sleepy Joe Biden and Hussein Obama. They destroyed our country and they let radical left stupid people lose our great country. Why don't you reboot that show smarter than a British sixth fifth grader? Oh, maybe we will. Smarter than a British fifth grader with single moms. <laughs> that makes him even smarter? Or that just helps it makes, you? It makes me smarter. <laughs> because then all of a sudden you start saying, well, hello. We check the teeth, make sure we have nice teeth, British woman. And we check the bra size and we say, okay, single mom. And maybe we start our own Donald Trump traditions. And now I'm not going to discuss the great Fred Trump traditions that everybody wants to hear about. I mean, if they didn't listen, if they didn't, excuse me, mm -hmm. I saw the Patreon numbers and I saw they've gone up. And that's they a have. Great thing. They have gone up. If you're up. listening to this show, what you missed this week, and I know we have, you have, I'm sure you're like, sir, we have a special order. We don't discuss Patreon yet. But the two things at the, you know, we usually talk about the higher level Patreon, okay, for our sort of exclusive best best members but what the poor people on patreon got this week the passover episode many people are saying might be the greatest bonus episode of all time I and think the so. review of the batman the review of the batman for the for the ivanka level people and above you know i don't know if siskel and siskel and edgar never had a show <laughs> as good as the one i did for the batman so there's a lot of stuff out there and i'm not but i don't we don't give it away for free you know, we do a lot of things for our great people, but if you want the bonus, if you want to really have the greatest experience, or you can be like a Sleepy Joe, bad teeth British person, you know, all of the above. Anyway, it's good marketing. Now, Mr. President, me, before we get uh, to our next story, uh, we do have two awesome sponsors this week and making podcasts great again is brought to you by Rebecca Sloan.com. You know, Rebecca Sloan, the one who tried to sneak into your DMS, Rebecca Sloan.com makes the most high quality sterling silver jewelry there is on the internet. I actually picked some up for my wife for mother's day and for her birthday they are made with different gemstones and you will look at this product and think it costs hundreds to thousands of dollars, but really all products range in the $200 range or less. It's always free shipping and it's high quality sterling silver. If you use coupon code Ivanka, you get 20% discount. That's right, Ivanka, that's I-V-A-N-K-A, -A, and it's RebeccaSloan.com, R-E-B-E-C-C-A-S-L-O-A-N-E. If you have an anniversary coming up, birthday coming up, and everyone has Mother's Day coming up, go to RebeccaSloan.com. Mr. President, I know you uh, you have purchased some things from RebeccaSloan.com. Is that true? 
Uh, well, I actually took uh, melanoma. My wife asked me to look after her son. Bartholomew? Bobby. No, not Bob Bobby. Bobby. Okay. And she asked me to look at it, and he said, sir, he said, sir, well, he said, sir, dad. And I said, uh, no, <laughs> stop it, sir. And he said, sir, what can I get for my mom? And I told him, how about some uh, strong herpes medication? <laughs> and he said, what's herpes, sir? And I said, don't worry about it. You'll learn soon enough. And he said, do you have any other ideas, sir? And I said, well, you know, your mother likes jewelry, okay? And she likes nice jewelry. And he said, sir, where can I find nice jewelry, sir? And I said, Billy, you go to RebeccaSloan.com. Now don't tell your mom about, don't tell you where, where, where you got it. Because if she goes looking in my phone, she's going to see texts and emails and all sorts of things from Rebecca Sloan saying, sir, run away with me, sir. I'll give you all the beautiful jewelry and myself. And I said, ma'am. I appreciate the offer, but no, thank you. I just want the jewelry. So I told him not to tell her where he got it, but he's, uh, he's look, he's making an order. He's placing an order for his uh, very uh, sexy, hot mother for Mother's Day. And uh, we're very proud and we're very happy, but obviously I don't want to, I don't want her to know it's Rebecca Sloan. Uh, she's probably going to think it's from, you know, the elite of the elite places. So, you know, no harm done. I don't get caught having a, an affair with Rebecca Sloan and melanoma gets beautiful jewelry from her son, Brendan. That's right. Rebecca Sloan.com always free shipping high quality sterling silver jewelry. They have rings and necklaces, bracelets, earrings, you name it. They have it. Go check it out today. Rebecca Sloan.com and use coupon code Ivanka. Also this Thursday, for all our perfect 10 Patreon patriots, we have the time live grade. Great time to upgrade if you are a BGMP or Ivanka level person. We've had some upgrades this week already. It's the live QAnon, and that's Thursday, April 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Join at patreon.com slash MPGA. You do not want to miss this live episode. Once a month, we go live. You can ask questions to the president. We have special guests that come on. Um, you don't want to miss it. And plus all the other bonus episodes on there, plus the movie reviews, special guests. It is awesome. So that's patreon.com. videos. Many of these people Exclusive. show up because of short right. videos. And every month... They get, I did the math on those videos mm -hmm. and I compared it to YouTube. And I don't mean this in a braggadocious truth social kind of way. It's literally thousands of dollars worth of videos over the last two years. If you just compare the stats to when they go public, that's a very exclusive, almost Rebecca Sloan level kind of deal for our great people. So... It definitely yeah. is. They're getting a lot. Patreon.com slash MPGA and welcome all the new Patreon members who signed up this past week. Thanks for coming aboard and we will see you on Thursday. Now, Mr. President, have you heard that Elon Musk, Elon Musk, the going to space, this man, He's building tunnels. He's building electric cars. And now add this to his resume. He bought Twitter. What are your thoughts on this man and him buying Twitter? Uh, Elon is, a, you know, he's an impressive person. You know, I like the fact that he's sort of more about freedom than some people like stupid Jeff Bezos from Amazon. But I think it's it's a good step for Twitter to get it out of the hands of radical left people and, and just it's called freedom. It's called speech. And I think it's a good step, but I, I think that Truth Social, you know, I don't, I don't know if you saw this today, I, I spoke out very strongly and said, even though they have a new owner, I will not be joining Twitter. I will not be rejoining if they, if Elon asks me to because they treated me very unfairly. They were very nasty to me. It was very, 
they didn't embarrass me, but they tried to embarrass me. And so we're going to stick, we're going to ride or die with truth. Sure, sure. Mr. President, it's it's new ownership, right? So shouldn't you give them a second you know, chance? I prefer truth. I prefer truth social ship. <laughs> but it's it's a new ownership. It's it's not the old ownership who kicked you out. Wouldn't you join the new regime? When I have what many people are saying is the most successful social media app in the history of social media called Truth Social, the most truthful social social media app then why the hell would I go back to Twitter? Why? Why put my great talent and my great reach with people who we can't trust? At Truth Social, we can trust everybody because in order to get on the site, you have to say that I will be truth and I will also be social. Now, recently you spoke and you called True Social, True Central. Did you change the name of True Social to Truth Central? Was this a new branding technique? I don't know. No, no. This is this is the fake lying news media using video of me speaking to make it look bad. <laughs> uh, I was saying Truth Central, meaning it's essential is a combination of social and essential okay and because i'm in a hurry and i want to combine things and it's called branding truth central was just my way of saying social and essential in one word central truth central you see that you see how it's like a sort of mashup remember lincoln park yes how would you spell that excuse me (laughs) i was asking about lincoln park yes by the way Where's Trump Park? Why isn't there a great band called Trump Park? No, I know, of course, the radical left. They don't want you to see Trump Park. Uh, what, a, what a band that would be. They would be tough as hell. Who would be but, the lead singer of Trump Park? I don't know. Some talented patriot. I thought maybe you'd just make a band of your uh, I don't know. We have, musicians. We have great people and we have great talent out there. I, wanna, I want the next... Trump Park to show up and, uh, you know, come up with their own sound and we'll respect it greatly. But uh, it's just like a mashup. Mm-hmm. You know, they did like the black music and the and the rock music. You know, they just say, like, yeah. and you lift weights strongly to it. And it's it's good time. But uh, what I was doing there was a mashup of. So when I said truth censure. What I was saying was, why would why would I say truth social is essential when I can just combine it very quickly and say truth central? So the way the way it sounded when you said it, it sounded like you forgot the name of your own social media company. So you think I forgot the name of Facts Essential? <laughs> it's, it's not Facts. It's it's truth truth social, not Facts Essential. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. I create the world's greatest social media platform. And you all of a sudden want to tell me that I don't know the name of my own social media platform. I know that it's truth social. Okay. But it's truth social. So it's essential and social, right? No, no, that was no, that was that was like a manner of speaking. It wasn't uh, that wasn't a renaming. That was just sort of let's, you know, if you say I can't do this or don't do this, how about don't do this? Don't is do not. Mm-hmm. If you if you say don't, do the words do and not stop existing? No, you just did a contraction there, but do and not. So truth says this, <laughs> and it's essential. So I'm just saying truth, it's when you combine them and you get moving along very quickly because you have a great rally going, you just say truth, and it's social is essential, but we combine it into essential. Gotcha. Crystal clear now. Well, and that's my apologies. Why, and that's why my platform 
honest community is going to be very huge. <laughs> okay. We'll just uh, move right along here. Did you see your former White House chief of staff? He gave over 2,319 text messages to, from his inner circle um, from the, to the January 6th committee. Did you see that? Yes. And I always say to people, don't write anything down. Don't send anything in email. Don't text. Just come see me. We'll talk. There'll be no record of it. Because that's what honest people do. Honest mm -hmm. people don't leave a trace. They don't leave any records. They just talk. They intimidate. And then there's no evidence. Uh, but when you're not an honest person, you create a lot of evidence. And that's what um, Mark, Mark Fields. Meadows. Who? <laughs> Remember Meta Soprano? She was on The Sopranos. She was no Ilanka, yeah. that I can tell. I can tell that I can tell you. She was, you know, oh, oh, Meadow. She's very beautiful. No, she was no Ivanka. No, they don't even look like each other. Meadow was a brunette, and Ivanka is a blonde. And the carpet matches the drapes, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's TMI right there. But... Oh, that's too much information, Mr. President. TMI, I thought that was truth, Marshall. <laughs> so Mark Meadows or Mark Fields, as you refer to him, maybe it's a nickname. Are you angry with him? Well, you know, yes. You want to, you know, you ever have, well, I'm just talking, you ever have Mrs. Fields cookies? Delicious. I got cookies. I'm a fan, and I prefer them. And and I prefer them much to you know. Famous Amos also gets talked about, but I'm like, no, thank you. I'll pass on Famous Amos. In fact, I cross the street when I see a pack of Famous Amos cookies. <laughs> what is your number one cookie to go to? Your number one cookie? Is it insomnia? Is it? Um, Chips Ahoy, Oreos. Don't talk about Ben Carson that way. <laughs> what I will tell you is my favorite cookie. Thing in the whole world. You ever have Entenmann's? Uh, yeah, I loved them when I was younger, but yes, I, okay. I like Entenmann's. Okay, yeah, no, now you're radical left, so you have to go to some artisanal. <laughs> oh, these cookies were made with uh, goat cum, and it's organically sourced. <laughs> I don't think I would enjoy a goat cum cookie. <laughs> I'm gonna try to time it while you're drinking strong water. And the I think the issue is Entenmann's cookies, what I like about them is you get a nice value, okay? They give you a nice big box in the store and they're little. But they're just there's no bullshit in an Entenmann's cookie. It's chocolate chips, a lot of butter, probably some oil, some flour, sugar, like and you just pop those suckers like popcorn. And mm. then you take a big strong shit afterwards and it's very powerful. <laughs> no, but you go to the organic place, you know, you, you have to try these cookies. They're six pounds of uh, locally sourced organic, uh, the, the chicken bled into its own feces and they stirred that into the into the grain and the brown sugar and made a nine pound cookie and it's 43 dollars sir well getting back to mark meadows are you angry with him that he released all these text messages i'm angry that he had the text messages okay i you know once you know he he, he was following laws which i think we should probably be changed, but he should have never had the text messages in the first place. Like what's, uh, what, like what's he texting Martin Taylor Green? Is she sending dick pics to him? Well, that that's one text message that I want to get to here. And I'm going to quote this green text. Like to see her texts. I bet you, I bet you she's got a lot of real. I think she pegs Madison Cawthorn, you know, the handsome wheelchair guy. 
Yes. I'm pretty sure she straps on a Louisville slugger and goes to town on his dead dead anus. <laughs> Title? I think so. Green, Green texted this to Mr. Meadows. In our private chat with only members, several are saying the only way to save a republic is for is Trump. Is that like to... OnlyFans? Or is this I, an OnlyFans chat? I don't know. I'm, I'm not uh, privy to this knowledge. kind of a weird way? You've got members only and only members and only fans. Interesting. Very. It says to save our republic is for Trump to call for martial law. I don't know on those things. I just wanted you to tell him they stole this election. We all know they will destroy our country next. Please tell him to declassify as much as possible as we can go after Biden and anyone else. And Meadows did not respond to that psychotic text message. It's actually called patriotic, not psychotic. Okay. Uh, She loves her country. She, you know, she is uh, loving a country. Uh, shouldn't be a crime. Tech stuff. Okay. And she loves her country. She loves her country the way she loves getting double teamed behind her husband's back at her gym. <laughs> and that's a strong love. That is a strong love. I'd like to see her texts. I think they should subpoena her texts. <laughs> Let's see what's on those because she's probably doing some some real. Real powerful patriotism at her CrossFit gym. She's a she's a piece of work. Mr. President, there's, there's two more things in the news I'd like to speak to you about, and that is uh, going back to the New York Attorney General, the alleged uh, racist New York Attorney General, and a judge is holding you in a t- contempt of court over documents that you wouldn't hand over Um, in this inquiry by the New York Attorney General. Uh, My first question is, what are your thoughts on this contempt of court? I never even met this court. (laughs) So I don't even know what they talk. You know, they, they, oh, yes, contempt of court. How how could I have contempt of, I never met the court. I don't know the court. Never heard of the court. And they say, you have contempt, sir. How can I have contempt? I'm actually a nice guy. You, you may, oh, Tiffany agrees. You may not think that because you're weak, but I'm a very nice guy. And to say that I have contempt of court is like one of the dumbest, stupidest things I've ever heard. I just won't give them documents and they say you have contempt. No, it's just, I'm gonna keep my documents, thank you. Why, if you have nothing to hide, why wouldn't you turn the documents over? I just don't feel like it. It's not contempt, it's just, I choose. It's pro-choice. The left should like that. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-keeping my documents away from the court. My documents, my choice. (laughs) Is that the saying? No, it's certainly a rival to dead anus. The title of the week. So your documents, your choice? My documents, my choice. Is there anything scandalous or sketchy in these documents or are you just a power move? Don't want to hold them. I just believe in freedom. I believe in truth and social and truth social. And I don't believe in letting a court, if we, what kind of nation are we, if we just decide that, oh, a court can order somebody to do something. I don't know. That's the judicial system. No, that's called uh, tyranny. When when you go to a court and they tell you what to do and you're just a nice, strong, presidential businessman, white person, it's called tyranny. Okay. Mr. President, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about today, are you a fan of Johnny Depp? Yes, I know he's an old right now with Amber Heard, who is a very attractive woman, <laughs> but who is very, seems crazy. And so I have sympathy for Johnny Depp, but also he's very weak. 
for letting this actress take a big shit on his bed. And that's my new character, Johnny Depp. I was going to ask you if you thought that Johnny Depp sounded like he was auditioning throughout his testimony. (laughs) You know, this guy's from Kentucky. Okay. You know who's from Kentucky? Mitch McConnell. I'm going to do a side by side for you. Mitch McConnell (laughs) and Johnny Depp. Oh, I like coal and racism and the Confederate flag. And I like America and conservative justices. So that's one accent from Kentucky. And then the other one is Johnny Depp. So I was dating Amber Heard and she took a shit on my bed. When I was trying to film Pirates of the Caribbean 69, she <laughs> took a shit and threw things at me and it was very unfair. Oh, uh, interesting. That's how you talk, Johnny Depp. This is how I talk. I'm from the same <laughs> state as you, Johnny Depp. I'm Mitch McConnell. Hello, Mitch. Do you know my wife, Amber Heard? How do you talk like that? Why do I talk like what? Like you're from some foreign country. That's not how we're found in Kentucky. Uh, well, you know, uh, we're from a different part of the state than you, Mitch McConnell. We're from the part of the country where we are very pretentious and want to act like we're British, but also have soul patches and scarves. Well, I could use some of your scarves to cover up my bullfrog neck. And scene, it's called end scene. Uh, (laughs) Now, you did talk about how Amber heard his ex-wife. A lot of, (laughs) he used the word uh, fecal matter, I think it was the term that he used that was found in his bed. Yeah, what? so it's so immature. The real term is poopy poop. <laughs> uh, what do you think of a woman who would defecate in another man's bed? Do you know one time I'm going to tell you a story, and this is this will tell you all you need to know, and we can end the episode on this. By okay. the way, if people aren't tweeting and sharing clips of your president as Johnny Depp and Mitch McConnell, do they even like the show? And I mean, that a serious, do they even, if they just say, send like a private message and say, sir, that was very funny, sir. You gotta share that with the world. This is the kind of thing more people should be hearing. But what I would tell you is it's a very simple story and we will end the episode because McDonald's just arrived. Okay. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was in Russia back in the nineties and I was hanging out with Vlad Putin <laughs> And we had some beautiful prostitutes in the room. And Vlad insisted that they had been paid for everything, including anal. And so we were doing strong anal. And a tiny, little, almost microscopic, little little dingleberry cut on Putin's Russian penis. And he had the, he had all the prostitutes drowned. They took him out to the sea and drowned them all. <laughs> so you can imagine how I, learning from Putin, or how Putin would react to an entire full poopy poop on the bed when a microscopic dingleberry led to, let me see if I remember how many prostitutes, 19 <laughs> drownings. There were Jeez. a lot of prostitutes there. So, um, so no, I'm not in favor of it. And Amber Heard would have a lot of problems. She would be Amber Hurt. Do you get that? Well, yeah, some of his uh, text messages. No, excuse me, do you get, no, she I, would be no, Amber I got it. Hurt. No, excuse, I'm not sure that you do. Okay. She would be Amber Hurt. I get it. I, I get what you did with her name. Because, well, she, excuse me. Her name is yeah. Heard. Right. Not Hurt. I, yes. So if she did this to me, she would no longer be Amber Heard. She'd be really Amber like Hurt, right? No, she'd still be Amber Heard. What are you talking about? You don't change somebody's name just because you shit on a bed. You know what? This episode is done. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, tech stuff.
<laughs> well, Mr. President, <laughs> thank you for joining us another week. And you're going to join us twice this week for our bonus episode on April 28th. That's Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We will send out the invite on Wednesday. Are we having you- pet? Are we having pet? Pet presidency. I think we're having a pet presidency race. It may be unopposed. It might have to be Oscar the cat from Australia. It might have unless, to be. Unless other pets show up. And I'm talking to the African American dog Otto. Yeah, Otto has not been there in a while. I don't know. I think he's still sour. If they don't show up after this, uh, after what we just did, if the, pat- uh, the strong patriotism and character work that went on on this episode, I want to see that Zoom chat full. I want to see more subscribers. I want to see people tweeting about the show and saying, you've got to check out, this is this is the episode. I mean, I agree. Bonus, this April, it's almost like one of us had a birthday this month and decided instead of taking <laughs> gifts to give very strong, powerful gifts to the fans. And this is how they repay, by, by keeping it a secret. No, it's very weak, very radical left. Very, very weak. Uh, thank you for everyone who listened. Check out RebeccaSloan.com. Any anniversary coming up. Mother's Day is coming up. So check out RebeccaSloan.com. R-E-B-E-C-C-A-S-L-O-A-N-E.com. And put in coupon code Ivanka for a 20% discount. And it's always free shipping. So you can get it anywhere in the United States and maybe even the world. Who knows? It doesn't say here on the ad. And join the Patreon, patreon.com slash MPGA to all the people who joined up this week. Welcome. And we look forward to seeing you on Thursday. And if you have not already, please go rent my special. It is everywhere that you can find that Amazon, YouTube, Vimeo, cable, uh, video on demand, something from nothing. Check that out, please. And Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody, if you're still listening, seriously, come on. I think we just dropped the classic. So join the Patreon. Get your friends listening to the show, enjoying the free feed. Get them hooked. The more, the merrier. I don't even know how this show is still going strong and how I've, you know, 220 something episodes still, still mining that piece <laughs> of shit for comedy. But as far as my comedy, I already told you about the two big things, JL Max Plus Prime, my Patreon, uh, which goes live Thursday. Um, A lot of good stuff there. Uh, If you listen to listen to Righteous Prick podcast where you'll get more info about that. And then as far as shows, I'm in D.C. Friday, Culpeper, Virginia, Saturday. Um, my special taping is May 14th in New York City. And then I'm at in Sellersville, Pennsylvania, which is like between Philly and Allentown. Uh, so if you're anywhere in that region, come out to that on May 22nd. And then July 15th, I'm in Boston at City Winery uh, for two shows. So uh, all ticket links are at jlcomedy.com. Uh, so yeah, do that. Thank you for listening as always. Um, and uh, God help us all. <laughs>